I never had any advice, and, and she wouldn't give that. But she would listen, she would ask questions, uh, she would be endlessly knowledgeable about everything happening in the Commonwealth. I was very embarrassed one day because I went in to see her at six o'clock, and I didn't know that one of the Commonwealth leaders had, uh, had been uh, ousted and that a gov new government had been formed. And she was telling me what was happening when I was supposed to report to her. And even on British affairs, you know, I'd been in the House of Commons all afternoon in mean, endless debates or cabinet meetings or something. And she, I think, had been watching television. She was getting uh, uh, notes from her secretaries and she actually knew better about what was happening to the country than I was. It was quite embarrassing, but it, it just showed how conscientious she was, how well up on the detail. And I think right to the last. And, and you could see that in the meeting she had with uh, Liz Truss when she became Prime Minister and Boris Johnson when she left. That she fulfilled her duties right up until the end. But she, she listened and she asked questions. And remember, famously, she asked, you know, why have these bankers got it all wrong in 2008? But she would never impose her will. And th this is the modern monarchy. And I think she set the tone for what King Charles and other monarchs will do. Did she ever change your mind? I think in, in, in the Commonwealth, yes. I mean, she, she was so supportive of the Commonwealth. One of her great friends, and probably the two greatest leaders at the time, were herself and Nelson, Nelson Mandela, and they had a great relationship. And I knew Mandela uh, well, and he used to tell me these stories. You know, when he talked to the Queen uh, and phoned her up from, from South Africa, you know, we would have said, Your Majesty, Ma'am, how are you? Uh, he said, uh, Hello, Elizabeth. How's the Duke? I mean, these were the words he actually used.